Have you ever noticed how much opera singers open their mouths when they sing those full, huge notes? While we don't have to create the same amount and quality of sound when we speak in public, we can employ similar techniques to achieve our vocal quality goals. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces who are working to change the world. This episode is brought to you by Brain FM. Brain FM combines the best of music and neuroscience to help you relax, focus, meditate, and even sleep. I love it and have been using it to write, create, and do some of my deepest work. Because you're a listener of the show, you can get a free trial. Head over to brain.fm slash innovative mindset to check it out. If you decide to subscribe, you can get 20% off with the coupon code innovative mindset, all one word. And now let's get to the show. Hey there, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. I am super happy that you're here and super honored that you've taken the time to be here with me and uh, your attention is precious and I'm really grateful for it. It's that simple. Today is another Speak From Within Day. I am creating the audiobook, and you get to benefit from it. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. I'm I'm recording the actual audiobook of my book on engaging, inspiring, and motivating audiences in live presentations and speeches, interviews, meetings, whatever it is that you need to do. <laughs> I'm actually recording it for you so you can listen to the entire book. If you go back to Thursday, about a month and a half ago, you'll be able to hear chapter by chapter. Every Thursday episode is Speak From Within. Today, we're going to talk about chapter nine. This is going to be chapter nine, Resonance. Let's talk about resonance. Resonance is the vibrational quality and fullness of sound that your voice has when you speak. That resonance can be thin and reedy, or it can be full with a lot of overtones. The more rich and resonant your voice sounds, the more those vibrations are moving through your entire vocal instrument, your body. And the more you communicate with your full being, the more you can connect with your audience on a whole and holistic level. That's the thing no one tells you. The more you can infuse your voice into the resonating chambers in your body, the more well-rounded, resonant, and engaging you'll sound. People like Benedict Cumberbatch and James Earl Jones, their voices resonate everywhere, and that's part of what makes them so powerful. Vocal Resonating Chambers, the Sound Amplifiers of the Body So what are these resonating chambers that no one told you about? Of course, we have the actual vocal folds in what sometimes is called the voice box or the larynx, but we also have other resonating chambers in our bodies, hollow places that help our voices produce vibrations for a richer sound. Our mouths, for example, mission, the ah sound. Try this experiment. Take a deep breath in and say, ah, for a count of five. Do it again, and this time, pay attention to how wide open your mouth is and how far apart you are holding your teeth. Was your mouth open wide, or did you have your teeth close together? Now, do it again. This time, when you make the ah for that five count, make sure that your teeth are far enough apart so that the tips of your index finger and middle finger held vertically fit between your top and bottom front teeth. For a quick demonstration of the two-finger rule, go to https colon slash slash isoldatee.com slash speak hyphen book under the chapter nine heading. Do the same thing one more time, only this time have your teeth separated just as they were when you first started making the ah sound. Do you notice a change in the sound you're making? If not, try it again a few more times. Pay attention to the quality of your sounds. Don't judge yourself, please, as that will make things more arduous than they need to be. Instead, just take note of the sounds you're making. We're just getting started on making your voice the best it can be. Take baby steps and remember, babies don't judge themselves harshly when they're learning to walk. Every time they fall on their tushies, they simply get up and try again. If they stop to judge themselves, we would be a world of crawlers. Experiment with how wide you're opening your mouth and listen for the changes in timbre, characteristics of the sound. You might notice you have a louder and fuller sound when your mouth is open a little more. Why is that? It's because you have a bigger resonating chamber when your mouth is open. Think about a guitar. 
Have you ever noticed the round hole in the center of the body of the guitar? That's called the sound hole. The image is at https colon slash slash isoldat.com slash speak hyphen book under the chapter nine heading. Although the vibrating strings, the guitar's version of the vocal folds, sit on the outside of the guitar, that sound hole is what truly magnifies the music and sends it out to listeners. As long as we're thinking about musical instruments, picture the difference between a small violin and a large bass. See the two images here, violin and stand-up bass images at ahgb colon slash slash is com slash speak hyphen book. Notice that the violin has a small body that's well suited for resonating with the high notes of its short strings. A bass, on the other hand, has a much bigger body and the notes are fuller and more resonant because of its greater size. Each is geared towards producing the best sound for the pitches it plays. So think about the pitches you want to produce and whether you need a violin or a bass when you open your mouth. A mouth resonating chamber of the optimal size and shape brings the best sound to your audience. Have you ever noticed how much opera singers open their mouths when they sing those full, huge notes? While we don't have to create the same amount and quality of sound when we speak in public, we can employ similar techniques to achieve our vocal quality goals. If our voices sound more resonant and full, they're more authoritative and easier to hear. And that leads to better connection, interaction, and communication with our audience. Sinuses and Speaking Another way to increase your resonance is to make sure that you've cleared your sinuses before you speak. Your sinus cavity is one of your main resonating chambers and it has a real effect on the sound of your voice. If your sinuses are stuffed up, you will have a specific sound, that stuffy, nasally sound you get when you have a cold. You'll also lose the ability to make several of your consonants. Mission, consonants and a stuffed up nose. Squeeze your nostrils shut with your thumb and index finger and try to say the letter N. Does it sound a little bit more like a D? Try to say an L while you're plugging your nose. What does it sound like? Is it different than usual? I'll bet it is. Speaking with intent. We all have unconscious habits that we have developed over the years. These habits, like filling spaces with um, sniffing, or clearing our throats, are interruptions to the flow of thought and our ability to listen. So here's another quick tip. Blow your nose before your interview, important meeting, or presentation. You'll increase the resonance in your voice and you won't sniff as much. The dreaded um also needs to go. We all know we shouldn't do it, and the majority of us use it as a crutch. Whenever we're not sure of what we're going to say next, we default to um, like, or another vocal placeholder. It makes us feel safer because it takes up room and sound in our space. Yet, just because it fills a silence doesn't mean it's a good idea. We feel like it's providing resonance, sound, and something for our listeners to hang on to while we essentially stall for time. But instead... We're putting filler out there, and that diffuses our message. Start listening for um in your speech. Notice when you're using it, and instead of defaulting to that vocal placeholder, build a sense of comfort with the pause. Radio people say it's, quote, dead air, unquote, when no one's speaking. But I like to think of it as breath. When you pause in silence instead of filling the room with an um, you are leaving space for your listeners to breathe much like the white space on a piece of paper leaves reader room to think. In an instant of silence, take a moment and reconnect with the people listening to you. Acknowledge everyone in the room, as well as yourself, and make sure they all know that you are there, present, with them, in that moment, and for the duration of your acquaintance. The more people know your authentic regard for them, the more they'll respond in kind because some part of each of us recognizes the need to be heard and understood. It's ancient and primary to our survival. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I love discussing how to communicate better because I think if you've listened to the show for any amount of time, you know that I think communication, understanding each other, and more importantly, being curious to understand each other is really the best way for us to, to resolve problems and issues. And the more creatively we can do it, the more innovatively we can do it, the better. But you know all of that. I am Isolde Trachtenberg. I hope, as I said, that you've enjoyed the show. 
And if you're liking it, I would love, love, love. I'd be so honored if you'd leave a review of the show. I, it would mean the world to me, really, because it would tell me that uh, that you're out there and that you're listening and that we're both striving to understand each other. All righty. I, uh, well, yeah, I should let you know the show was brought to you by the book Speak From Within that you can buy if you're like, I want to read on. I want to go faster than you're reading it. Feel free to buy it either at isoldatcom slash speak hyphen book, which is, by the way, where you can get all of the videos and extra materials and the bonuses and all of that and or on Amazon. And I believe it's on Barnes and Noble as well. Anyway, uh, also, the show is brought to you by the app Brain FM. I love the app. You know, I love the app. I use it daily. I used it this morning while I was writing my morning pages. And uh, it's super exciting for me to talk to you about it. If you decide you want to do a trial of it, you can grab 20% off with the coupon that I have just for you. You can go to brain.fm slash innovative mindset and then use the innovative mindset coupon. Innovative mindset is all one word to get 20% off. And if you do that, because I'm an affiliate, because I believe in this app, I'll get a wee commission. Alrighty, until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.